Welcome back for part two of the Housing and Refugee episode of the 10 Minutes On podcast. Wondering, as we are recording this, it's just before Homelessness Sunday, what are some of the opportunities that faith communities, churches, Christians, how can they use that opportunity to basically challenge some of those stereotypes and what are the resources that you've got to provide them and support them in doing that? Well, it's a really great opportunity because the specific date, the 6th of October, it's a fantastic opportunity to really focus in on the matter, look at what the issue is in your local area, look at what you personally can do, what you as a faith or community group can do, look at what your local authority and your local government can do. Our website, as you said, they are housing justice website is full of resources for individuals and churches to be able to do everything from praying right through to signing a letter to the government. We hope that people will take this opportunity to see what they can do to help people experiencing homelessness, but also to think what the church's role is in housing. So not just the emergency end um, at providing people with food and support, but actually what can we do to really help end the housing crisis? Because we know that is absolutely fundamental to, to end homelessness. Brilliant. Thank you. Well, why don't we turn then to some of the work that Housing Justice is doing, some incredible work to tackle homelessness. Bonnie, could you give us an overview of Housing Justice efforts in addressing homelessness in the UK? Yeah, absolutely. It is my pleasure to be the chief exec of this organisation because the work that the team do is just so phenomenal. For for a relatively small organisation, I I feel proud to say that our impact is significant. And we run projects from the the kind of critical end of of homelessness where people are experiencing rough sleeping, where we provide a support network to the night shelters that run across England and London. We provide advice, guidance and um, quality mark assessments to ensure that each year we're trying to improve the quality of the accommodation that we provide for people. And although, again, night shelters is not everyone's first choice, the way that we operate them with church communities is so important because it brings that love, the nurture, the community bonding that is a really important part of helping people when they're experiencing homelessness. We also provide services. We are really proud of a service called Citadel, which comes from the biblical turn of building that, that strength of wall around you and a safe place and we help people who are experiencing homelessness to find a home and to sustain it and the crucial element of this project is that we use volunteers from faith and community groups we match them with individuals experiencing homelessness and they develop really beautiful relationships that sometimes people experiencing homelessness don't otherwise have so they may not have a family support network and our volunteers often pick up that role and jump into it and really help to turn that person's life around and that can be anything from viewing properties, helping them to paint the flat, meeting them for coffee and cake, taking them to job applications, saying to them, come on now, come on now, Heather, you said you were going to this GP appointment, don't let me down. And they've got that beautiful and um, symbiotic kind of human relationship. So it, And it's really nurturing. So it encourages people to drive forward um, when sometimes those choices are quite difficult after a traumatic period of being homeless. And that project's currently running in Wales, and we're just expanding it right across a number of areas in England, in Sheffield, Hastings, Bristol, Cornwall, and London. So we're really excited to see how it's being taken seriously, and the role of faith groups is making such a big difference. We also run a couple of different projects for people seeking asylum. So asylum seekers and newly granted refugees, Joe Germain to talk about those. And Finally, we help to increase the supply of affordable homes by helping churches to sell redundant land and buildings for affordable housing. And we feel really passionately about that project as well because we're able to help at the acute end where people are rough sleeping right through to enabling the supply. Wow, that is a huge amount of work. And certainly I know as a local minister at the time of the last three, four, five years, uh, working really closely with Housing Justice on our local night shelter circuit, which again, the support that we got from Housing Justice was really and truly invaluable. It was just amazing. So um, thank you so much to you and the team for the support that you, you give to so many different community groups. You mentioned some of the the challenges that face people who basically experience rough sleeping and homes, homelessness. With the recent statistics on homelessness rising, what are there any other challenges that people who experience homelessness face in being able to settle and find permanent accommodation? I mean, it's just so multifaceted. It's absolutely huge. By the time you've ended up 
um, experiencing homelessness, a whole array of things in your life have become out of your control potentially. Because if you had a supportive family around you, you would be living with them. If you had financial support, you would be renting your own place. If your health was in good condition, you'd be working and then be able to afford somewhere. So it really is a really difficult time by the time someone come, is experiencing homelessness. And people that, you know, there was a, another mistruth around there for a while that people said everyone is one paycheck away from homelessness. But the reality is that's not true. And that some people are more likely to experience homelessness than others. And that is because of previous trauma and disadvantage in their lives. So actually, we have a real duty as Christians and people of faith to help people that do find themselves experiencing homelessness, because that's not the first thing that's traumatic that's happened to that yep. individual. For some people, it can be an immediate thing, you know, a relationship breakdown. But for the vast majority of people, it's it, it's been a pathway that is traumatic. So we know that we need to help people find accommodation. But a big part of the issue now is that people are stuck in emergency accommodation for a long period of time. And sometimes we refer to that as B&Bs. And when I started in this area of work about 20 years ago, my opinion of a B&B was homemade biscuits by a little flowery bed with a pot of tea. I then went to visit some and was, was really, really taken aback by what I was seeing. It was some of the most appalling accommodation that I, I couldn't even imagine. I mean, I can't, I can't describe because it wouldn't be appropriate some of the things I've seen in that accommodation. But needless to say, it is not, not, not all of it is fit for human habitation. And it absolutely breaks my heart that we've got humans living in that and children as well. And there are a lot of studies that have come out this year that show that it's actually damaging the physiological development of children because of the restrictions on their diet and mobility. So we know that it is a multifaceted issue, but when people do get into accommodation, they've obviously been through an additional trauma of being in temporary accommodation for a period of time, a significant period of time. Added to that, the accommodation they then get put in is likely to be in a different location. So, you know, we, people will have to change schools, transport links, GPs all over again. And most significantly, they'll be in a community that they potentially have no ties with at all. So it can feel extremely isolating and overwhelming to know where to start. So what's so important is wrapping around those people, finding the local services that know those people and being part of their new community, the new sense of their belonging, helping them to embed and feel welcome and attached. Because without a sense of belonging in our communities, it really is a very lonely place. So there's a huge difference that we can make to people just by being aware of who might be moving in and, and wrapping around them. That's really helpful. And I guess in, in many ways, and listening to a lot of what you were sharing, some of the challenges, I'm really challenged by the fact that a lot of this is also down to relationship building. That's where churches are best placed to to help and support. And I'm just wondering from your experiences for working for Housing Justice, are there any recent success stories or initiatives that you've been particularly proud of as individuals relating to the Faith in Affordable Housing Project in particular? So, as you say, the Faith in Affordable Housing Project is is one where we help churches to identify redundant land and buildings to turn into affordable homes. And there has been some absolutely incredible stories of re rethinking the way the church works. So there's one not too far from me called Albany Baptist Church, if you want to look it up. And they recognised that they had two buildings and that they could manage with one. And they recognise that the community have a lot of needs. So they asked their community and their thriving congregation, what do we most need here? And the overwhelming answer was social housing. So they set about working with us and uh, local social housing providers to identify how that excess building could be transferred into housing. So they've kept the original beautiful building and built onto the back of it. And it's the most beautiful development now where there's going to be sort of 14 flats, I believe, connected by a glass cafe to the existing church building. Now, the existing church building is used day in, day out for all different community activities. It's absolutely thriving with all different diversities of the local community. And the glass cafe in between is going to be run by people with learning differences. And, you know, it's going to enable people with learning dif differences who may not otherwise find employment to work in their community to meet people and to bring the two sides of the church as it will now be with accommodation on one and a church on the other together. 
And it's just the most incredible example of what a church can do to maximise the use of their space to benefit the local community. What a story. Wow. That is such an amazing sort of example. And also just as a fellow Baptist, um, quite nice to hear us involved in this as well. Thank you for listening to part two of the Housing and Refugees episode of the 10 Minutes On podcast. Stay tuned for part three.